After a week of major travel troubles that have finally improved, how different problems are now making things difficult again at Orlando International Airport. All on what's expected to be the busiest day of travel of the holiday travel season. And the lines uh, were too long. There was not organization from part of the airline. The latest from OIA and the problems travelers are facing now. Plus, we're pushing for answers after a couple in their 80s was found dead in a Central Florida retirement community. Was this a robbery gone bad that, you know, has something been going on? You, you know what I mean? Like, I worry in my neighborhood. But police are telling us tonight about the case and why neighbors say they still have so many questions. This is WFTV Tonight. We'll have all those stories in just a moment, but we are beginning with breaking news tonight out of Cincinnati, where tonight's Monday night football game involving the Bengals and the Bills has been postponed after player collapsed on the field following a hit. Good evening. I'm Martha Sigalski. Sports anchor Alex Walker is live in the studio with me right now at the latest. And Alex, it was horrible to watch 24-year-old DeMar Hamlin collapse after he stood up from taking that hit in the first quarter. Martha, a terrifying situation in Cincinnati in the first quarter of tonight's Bills-Bengals game just before nine o'clock Buffalo safety DeMar Hamlin made a tackle got to his feet and collapsed to the ground moments later medical crews tended to Hamlin and soon thereafter administered CPR with an ambulance on the field the NFL telling us tonight that DeMar Hamlin is currently in critical condition tonight's game was temporarily suspended at about 9 15 and just about an hour ago was officially postponed now due to the sensitivity of the situation we are not showing the hit that that caused Hamlin to collapse. But we do have video of the raw emotion from both Bills and Bengals players after that hit occurred. You could tell almost immediately that something was seriously wrong. DeMar's mother was in the stands tonight, and we have learned that she was in the ambulance with her son as he was transported to the University of Cincinnati Medical Center. It is the only level one trauma center in the area. The NFL releasing this statement. Tonight's Buffalo Bills Cincinnati Bengals game has been postponed after Buffalo Bills DeMar Hamlin collapsed. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell announced. Hamlin received received immediate medical attention on the field by team and independent medical staff and local paramedics. He was then transported to a local hospital where he is in critical condition. Our thoughts are with DeMar and the Buffalo Bills. We will provide more information as it becomes available. The NFL has been in constant communication with the NFL Players Association, which is in agreement with postponing the game. And Martha, there is simply no precedent for this scary situation in Cincinnati to have an ambulance on the field after a player just received CPR. We just haven't seen that. Postponing tonight's game, it was the right move as the players, the coaches, and families try to digest tonight's news. And you had mentioned that uh, there are a bunch of fans and players giving back to a foundation that DeMar has. Yeah, DeMar has a foundation where he ra he's always giving back to the community and he has a toy drive. And I've been monitoring it for the past hour since this broke, Alex, and it's almost at a million dollars when it started, I believe, at like $5,000. So people are praying for him, obviously, but giving back. And this is what he does in his community is, is raise money to give toys to the underserved in his old community. Yeah, and one quick note that former coaches, players, current uh, teammates of him, I've been saying that this is a guy that is seriously involved in his community. He likes to give back gentle heart. So uh, great to see that. And we are hoping for the best. Once again, he is in critical condition currently in Cincinnati. And of course, we're going to monitor the situation and we're going to bring you more coming up on Eyewitness News this morning, being at 4.30 with the very latest. All right, Alex, thank you. More delays, more cancellations, and more frustrated passengers tonight at Orlando International Airport. All of this comes after recent mass travel troubles that stranded thousands of people across the country all last week. And now passengers are once again having a tough time getting home after the New Year's holiday. Right now, OIA reporting 32 canceled flights and 25 delayed flights. Ashley Edlin live at the airport with more. Ash, how is it out there? Well, Martha, we've got good news because if you take a look at the board here, we're seeing more flights are arriving on time, more are departing on time here. Take a look. That was not what the board looked like just one hour ago. The FAA telling us around 8 o'clock tonight that they were having some computer issues, but those issues had been resolved. 
Anthony DeCampo at MCO today trying to get his family home to New Hampshire. I was supposed to leave at 6.50 and now I'm not, not I'm delayed till 10.59 p.m. tonight. <laughs> yeah, the kids got to go back to school tomorrow too. DeCampo said it wasn't ideal, but he was going to get there tonight. Then while we were talking to him. At 6.45 a.m.? Are you kidding me? It's connecting at 6.45 a.m. You were supposed to have a direct flight? Yep. He's not alone on what's expected to be the busiest day of the holiday travel season. 162,000 people are expected to pass through the airport. But a big part of the cancellations and delays we saw on the arrivals and departures board throughout the day. The FAA said they slowed traffic volume down into Florida because of a computer issue. That caused an average delay of 176 minutes. Nearly half of inbound flights were impacted. Got canceled after it was delayed and we still haven't been able to get our luggage. Jacqueline Bowers says she was able to rebook on another airline. My daughter actually did on Spirit. And the original flight was for? 2.40. Late and not ideal, but it's going to have to work. Then we have to fly into Chicago because we can't get one into Milwaukee. So you guys are going to get home really late tonight? Yeah, probably like three or four. DeCampo, who's booked on Southwest, says he was hoping for better luck too. They said everything was going to be back on schedule for Friday. Well, it's not on schedule if they're doing this to people. I was hoping that everything was fixed and we wouldn't have to deal with it, but I guess I was wrong. Now that board you're looking at behind me, looking a little bit better within the past hour. Like I said, the FAA said around 8 o'clock tonight that their computer issues were resolved, but they were trying to get traffic flowing back into Florida. So the board seems to have some good news. So of course, we will keep you updated. Live at MCO, I'm Ashley Edlin for WFTV Tonight. A $10,000 reward being offered for information leading to an arrest after a husband and wife in their 80s were found dead in a retirement community in Mount Dora. It happened in the Waterman Village Senior Living Apartments on Saturday right by the Donley Street area just south of 441. Neighbors are asking about a motive as they remain on edge tonight worried about their own safety. Felicia Ashley talked to some neighbors who still say they just have so many questions. Right now, Flagler County deputies trying to track down a missing teenager, 13-year-old Miracle Hall. Hasn't been seen since last Friday night. Take a good look. She was supposed to have returned to her home in Palm Coast on New Year's Day. If you know where she is, you're being urged to contact the Flagler County Sheriff's Office. Today was the cheese and Citrus Bowl at Camping World Stadium. Sports anchor Alex Walker was at the game today and gives us the important stats from LSU's impressive win. A new survey shows that teenagers across the country are dealing with cyber bullying. It's hard for the kids to shut it off. Still ahead, what you can do if your child has become a target online. Also, 2022 was an interesting year for home sales. Next, we're going to find out what real estate experts are saying about the housing market for 2023. Sky Witness 9 on Channel 9 Eyewitness News, bringing you closer to the scene during breaking news. Brought to you by attorney Dan Newland. This week on Wheel, can a contestant's contortions it's gonna be very close. really take control? And how'd you do that? Catch the magic only on Wheel. Brought to you by your Southeast Toyota dealers. Orlando's housing market is expected to heat back up during the 2023 buying season this upcoming spring. Real estate agents expect to be more typical this season, giving buyers a chance to breathe. As Nick Pamatonis explains, even with improved conditions, it will still remain a seller's market. All right, check out this unique site today out of Brevard County. Have you ever heard, Thomas, of a fog a bow? Yeah, I have, but you don't see them very often. You don't. According to the U.S. National Weather Service in Melbourne, someone recently spotted one in Vieira. Forecasters say the cloud-like arch is similar to a rainbow. However, it's made up of smaller water droplets that makes for weaker color separation. Because of that, the fog bow appears mostly white. I like saying that. Fog bow. That's right. Um, and the uh, same reason that clouds are mostly white color versus like rainbow color mm -hmm. uh, is kind of the same reason that the fog bow is kind of more white. It's very small droplets and I could keep going, but I got two minutes. <laughs> you do, so 
you better get to the weather. Start the clock. <laughs> uh, here's the live visibility. We've got th uh, a third of a mile. It's uh, starting to roll in the fog along our east coast here. You see the darker colors. That fog starting to work its way down through the land, even into Sanford now. Dense fog advisory is in effect overnight tonight through around uh, 8 30, 9 o'clock in the morning here from Lake County Orange and especially up to the north and west. And Future Track just did its update cycle and it's showing very well the darker areas here uh, all the way through 3 o'clock in the morning. That'll be areas of fog and just kind of lingering. It really takes some of the daytime heat starting to mix in the atmosphere, get those thermals rising and start breaking up the low stratus. By the time we get to our launch time tomorrow morning, just before 10 o'clock, the weather does look good along our Space Coast. And beautiful day in Castleberry tomorrow once we get out of the fog. Temperatures in the low 80s in the afternoon. Uh, Eustace and Leesburg, we're going to keep you in the low 80s. There's our cool down for Friday and it looks like a beautiful upcoming weekend. Seven day forecast. The weekend always in view after the fog lifts. 83 tomorrow, 84 on Wednesday near records for daytime highs. Thursday chance for rain mainly in the uh, mid to late afternoon and then a spectacular stretch Martha starting Friday through the weekend. Happy New Year, my friend. And to you. Thank you. There are some alarming statistics when it comes to teenage cyberbullying. Coming up, WFTV tonight is breaking down the warning signs for parents. Whether it's severe weather, whether it's hurricane coverage, it's just a matter of time that we're all going to be impacted in some way. Central Florida's chief meteorologist, Tom Terry. There's a lot going on here in Central Florida. Every storm is different. Every storm is unique. We do this year after year after year. How to get ready for a hurricane, how to prepare when a tornado comes through, what to do when these big hailstorms are rolling by. We have a very important role when it comes to public safety. This is why I do what I do and have for a long time. Weather coverage you can count on. Nearly half of teens say they're experiencing harassment and bullying online. That's according to a recent nationwide survey. Researchers say most teens believe their physical appearance makes them a target for cyberbullying. Washington correspondent Kirsten Garris talked with teachers and experts about these incidents and what you can do to help your child. A large Orlando attraction remains closed tonight for maintenance following this incident. Cell phone video captured the moments. Look at that, that sparks flew from the wheel on International Drive. Icon Park says a power outage brought the ride to a stop Saturday night. Dozens of people were trapped inside 20 different pods. Firefighters used cranes to rescue dozens of people. Icon Park is still looking into what caused the power to go out. We're going to have a quick look at your wake up forecast right after this quick break. Stay with us. Doppler 9 radar is driven by Toyota of Orlando and Toyota of Claremont. All right, time to get your wake up weather. Fog early, so plan on leaving a little bit earlier in the morning. We've had this the last several nights, but we're kind of getting back into action tomorrow after the holiday today. Early fog uh, giving way to a beautiful warm afternoon, about 83 without breaking a sweat. But we will see a front uh, and some finally cooler weather just in time for the weekend. That sounds good. Looks all weekend, sir. That's right. Good rain January's shine. a pretty good month here. It certainly is. All right. Thanks so much for watching on this Monday night. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Good night. Bye. -bye. Watch Eyewitness News from any device with Eyewitness News Livestream, presented by Bogan Munns & Munns. Choose trust. Choose Bogan Munns & Munns. Central Florida's Chief Meteorologist, Tom Terry, on Channel 9.